and welcome back to the Breakfast on Blocks TV Africa. Now, a little bit of history. Let's go back to 2009 and tell you a very, of a very sad day in Iraq. On this day, a bomb went off in Baghdad that led to the loss of 155 people and wounded at least 721. The 25th of October 2009 bombings were, of course, uh, uh, some of the worst that Iraq has ever experienced. The attack was caused by two suicide car bombs and targeted the Ministry of Justice and the Baghdad Provincial Council building in a quick succession at 10.30 a.m. local time. Among the dead were 35 employees of the Ministry of Justice and at least 25 members of the Baghdad Provincial Council. Also, a bus carrying children from a daycare next to the Justice Ministry was also hit, killing the driver and two dozen children on board, as well as wounding six other children. It was, of course, on record the most deadly uh, terror attack in Iraq since August 2007. Very, 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 very sad. But up until this moment, uh, we're still talking about, you know, the bombs and killings and terror attacks across the entire country. I'm hoping that, you know, the world, I'm hoping that we're able to conquer, you know, all of this fight. It feels like it's almost impossible. I don't think I will. I, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, if it's going to... It's never going to end, but I'm thinking... Because, you know, the, the, the chase, talking about perfection, talking about absolute peace, talking about living in a world, living in a society where uh, we wouldn't have uh, terrorists and, you know, terror attacks and kidnappings and killings. I mean, it's an illusion, but we're saying it should be reduced to, you know, barest minimum. Well, well, like you said, it's an illusion and, you know, the possibilities. I mean, you're saying it should be reduced um, almost says like, it almost sounds rather like, you know, it, it, you know, some people will die, but at least not so many. Um, it shouldn't be very frequent. Uh, uh, once in a while, once in a, you know, once I, I in think a while. There's, I think there's, you know, there's other things that need to be understood about, you know, certain countries that have continued to have these experiences for decades now, Iraq and Afghanistan mostly. Um, we've also seen it, of course, over time spread into, you know, countries here in Africa, and I'm talking terror. Um, but there's other things that I believe need to be understood about, you know, why it's more, why it has, you know, seemed to be very, very difficult to end these things. The political aspects of it, um, that of course, the corruption, you know, aspect of it also, which have been underlying factors. And, you know, I will say underlying, but, you know, if, if we are being, if we look critically at it, they might be actually the biggest reasons why these things haven't ended. It's not necessarily really because of Islamic or religious fundamentalism. It really might be a lot more about politics and, um, and corruption. And, and if you have these things continue to play out, you know, in these places, it, it, it really makes it harder every single time to completely flush out these fundamentalists and these terrorists, um, but, sadly. You know, that's actually true because uh, for as long as you have humans, of course, the underlining interest would always be selfishness. Humans would always think in their own direction. And that's why uh, constantly you should ask yourself, how did this group of persons have the arms that they use, you know, in perpetuating all of this evil? The question is, you have a group of persons whose business, you know, at some point you would say that war is beneficial. Some people are profiting from all of this crime and yeah. criminalities that's ongoing. So um, that's why I'm saying that it's really going to be, you know, an illusion at the end of the day, but really we can actually reduce it. So I it boils down to, you know, um, you know, some consciousness, some hum human angle, you know, the mind and all of that. Absolutely. Um, but of course, still shocking. Remember uh, what we shared earlier, 155 people died on this day in 2009 in Baghdad. 721 were injured, and this includes dozens of school children and um, government officials in Baghdad on this day. Really, really sad and shocking figures. We'll take a short break. When we come back, our first major conversation for today, The Economist has put out a report on the Nigerian army. And of course, the Nigerian army in response is not very happy about it. They say it is set up to defame President Muhammad Buhari. We'll talk about that after this break.